go back to Saturday. Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what we've talked a little, lot this season about how games can swing with one play or a couple of plays. That seems to be the case on Saturday, where there were just a couple of instances. Talk about like the way the game changed throughout through the first half. You guys were doing really well. Second right. half, you stumbled, and that let Carlton back into the game a bit. Yeah, you know, it, exactly. There was a multiple number of, of of plays where we just didn't execute, just didn't finish. You know, we had opportunities to make plays, and we just didn't make them. You know, it's it, as frustrating as it is, it's the reality, you know, and you have a team, you know, and I thought we played really well, you know, the first half, and, you know, we were up 21 to 7 at halftime, and, and actually, you know, we did really well defensively in the third quarter, too, and it just, we kept stubbing our toe offensively. We couldn't, we couldn't sustain these drives, you know, and, and, uh, and, and you need you need to do that to obviously win football games, and, and we had opportunities to, you know, really, you know, put this team away, and, and we just we just didn't do it. And um, yeah, is it frustrating? It is, and our kids, you know, obviously were hurting afterwards, and and uh, it was a frustrating loss. And, but everything in, that could have gone wrong did, and and the timing of it all was was like timing I've never seen before. I mean, you think you've seen everything, Sella, in, in the years that I've been coaching, and it's always something that will surprise you. You've coached, you know, many teams. Could it be down to one of those things where it's not a veteran team just because of game experience, and they don't have that experience of putting teams away? Uh, like you said, at the half, you're up 21-7. Yeah. An experienced team that you've had in the past for years knows that they've come out first couple possessions that they can get a, a score that puts that team away. Right. Yeah, it's hard to put a finger on it. You know, if, if I had all those answers, I'd be writing a book and making millions, that's for sure. Um, it's just, it's hard sometimes. I mean, it, you know, because um, the week before against Bethel, it, you know, we, com we competed hard and grew up a lot. And that first half of Carlton was solid, and then it was just like you know you take a couple steps forward, and then you take a couple backwards, and and we certainly did that. And I th bottom line is, is you know, uh, when you have an opportunity to make a play, you can't look for somebody else to make it. You go out and make it. And and when I, and I talk to our guys about relax and go out and play football and, and enjoy the game because you know bottom line is it's still a game right and uh, and sometimes I think when you you tense up and, and, and maybe things just don't happen as freely as they should um, and you know this week we've had a really good week of practice we really have even yesterday it was raining the entire practice but it was a laser focused practice which which has kind of been the suit these last few weeks and and we know the type of opponent we've got coming in here we got a team coming in that is that's playing really good football they've won four of their last five they're well coached and they're believing um but yeah it 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 was a hard loss and and um yeah i don't i don't know if there was much sleep uh by anybody on our staff uh that night and and our kids were down too obviously they're, they're competitive but you, you know and the bottom line is you when you got a chance to put somebody out, you got to put them out. Uh, and as always the case, most of the times is there's always positives you can take. And one of the things is the play of senior running back Ben Hogarth has yeah. really progressed from the beginning of the year. Those first couple of games with Valley City in presentation, and now he's running for over 100 yards, and he's a threat out of the yeah. backfield in your passing game. Yeah. How has he progressed throughout the year? Well, I just said our running game in general has improved greatly. But yeah, Ben Hogarth is. I thought he had his best game of the year on Saturday. You, you, you're right. That was a huge positive, and and you know both. And I've said this before, and in, in this show is. As well as both him and Peyton Mortensen are, are two identical type backs. They're extremely cerebral. Um, they're, they, they can catch the ball in the backfield. They run extremely hard. They're physical type players. I just absolutely love watching those two compete. And uh, and and you're right. I mean, he, he has progressed. And you know, he's a transfer kid. You know, he came in from NDSU where he's playing defense, but he was. A, heck of a running back in high school so with our new offense we felt he'd fit in well into this backfield position and and he really has both him and Peyton uh, have been stellar for us. Uh, let's go forward to Saturday you talked about yeah. Augsburg coming in how they're on a, a win streak 
but fans might not know they have a new coach. Right. Uh, first time you'll face him because he was right. here before. How has their system changed from when Frank Hagee was the coach until now with the new coach? Yeah, well, Darren Lampker is their new coach, and, and um, I faced him before as an assistant coach when he was a player. You know, he was the MIC MVP at quarterback, and had an incredible receiver in Scotty Vistendahl, if you remember that. We actually played him in the playoffs in 97. It was supposed to be their home game, but we ended up getting it, and we played him in the Fargo Dome, and, and he was an incredible uh, quarterback, and just, you know, he's a smart, smart quarterback, and he's a heck of a football coach. I mean, and, and I think, um, um, you know, he, he's hired a really good staff, a lot of former high school coaches, um, you know, um, are on his staff, and, 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 and and they, they recruit the heck out of the cities, you know, they're really doing a good job with the recruiting. Um, but yeah, he was, a, might, a lot of people might not know this, um, that, but he was the head coach at Osseo High School and, and I believe, I think he got that job in like 2005, but they won a state title in 2015. And then he moved on to Edina and became the head football coach there. That was his last stop before coming in in the COVID year. So this is actually his second year, so they had like a full year. Um, putting in their systems and recruiting and doing what they need to do, but there's a lot of kids on this roster that we were recruiting too, you know. And one is their quarterback, Kate Sheehan, a kid out of Rochester, Mayo, who I just have always liked uh, his um, his tenacity and his speed and his quickness, and and he is a threat, boy. He is a threat to run at any time, and and. Um, uh, you know he's not very tall. He's only five nine, but boy, he's an athlete, and and we got to make sure we know, you know, try to keep him contained and do the things that we can do to stop him and slow him down. Offensively, what do you think is going to be the key for you guys on Saturday? Yeah, executing. You know, executing. They're athletic defensively. You know, Augsburg's always athletic. You know, but uh, now they're believing. Okay, they're believing in their system. They're believing in their coach and staff. You can see that, and and uh, they play really, really hard. And um, and they're going to give us you know some different looks. They're going to cause some fits with some different blitzes and stunts and things like that. But uh, it's just recognizing things and making decisions and pulling the trigger and and uh, you know being able to execute and stay on the field. You know one positive too from last week is our ball possession. You know we were close to 34 minutes of ball control. And you know we catch a few third down balls that traditionally not traditionally but just our kids don't usually drop as many balls as we dropped in key moments uh, and those are drive extenders if we catch those and and who knows what our time of possession could have been it could have been the best of the season you know but um, so you know staying on the field is going to be important obviously and executing uh, all right before we go special moment before the game bob nick former yeah. coach great player for the Cobbers, uh, is going to be honored. Uh, he'll bring out the game ball with his family. They're going to set up a scholarship in Bob's name. Yeah. Here's a couple uh, words about what Bob and a story. You have to give a story about Bob Nick from either playing days yeah. or coaching days uh, and what he's meant to the yeah. program. Well, he's meant a lot to me. Um, he was my position coach when I played here. I, I would have gone through a brick wall for the man. and and, and, and a lot of people would have obviously and the scholarship is is being uh, it's an endowment uh, to student scholarships in his name and, and this has been set up by former former players you know tennis players football players that have come forward and, and honoring him but uh, amazing um, amazing coach um, he was our offensive coordinator and my position coach when I played here and then when I took over for um, Coach Christofferson, um, he was my offensive coordinator until he retired. Um, probably one story, yeah, I, I do remember this, when I was a senior in college um, and I was getting ready to leave, I said, I'm going to come back and get your job someday. And we had that relationship, you know, and he started laughing. He says, come and get it, come and get it. All right, so then when I was hired, it was great because on the press conference, and you might remember this because you were here, but he said, he goes, you know, the, and he always calls me the kid, all right? And the kid told me that he was going to come back and get my job. Well, he didn't get my job. Now he's my boss, <laughs> and I don't know how to take that. Um, love the family. Love, they mean the world to me, and, and uh, he means so much to our Cobber football program, and, and what a great honor for him. And, and uh, so we really look forward to this honor. Thanks, Derek. Yep.